what's up you guys so i'm back with another video simon has gotten his nanny involved in the divorce i don't know if he paid her or what but she is speaking out and saying all kind of things about portia so we're going to get into that in this video but first i wanted to talk to y'all about something i mentioned in my last video i mentioned the last video where i spoke about portia and simon i mentioned to you all that it is simon's home that they are fighting over in this divorce Portia is not a co-owner of the home. I mentioned that to you all and I saw in the comments that some of y'all kept saying that Portia was a co-owner, that they bought it together. You saw them moving together and Portia also owns a home, but that is just not true. Like if you look, this is one of the documents from their divorce. This is when Simon was trying to get uh, possession of the home, possession of marital residence. And he also wanted to put a restraining order on Portia. And you see in number two, it has the address of the home. And it says in number one, the parties were married November 26, 2022. Prior to the party's marriage, the husband purchased the home and it has the address of the home. And it says solely from his personal funds. And that is his home. When you look up the, the county records, not Zillow, not Trulia, but when you go to the county records and you look at that address, the owner, the most current owner, Eeyore Gubadia. It's Simon's home. It doesn't list Portia because she's not a co-owner of the home. And in this county, Fulton County, when there are multiple owners, they do list all the owners. Like you have David and Deborah who also own a home in Fulton County. You have Mr. Jose and Sarah who also own a home in Fulton County and both of their names are listed. But for Simon's home, it only lists Simon because he's the only owner. And Portia even admitted that. She wants to stay in the home because it was promised to her in the prenup that she could reside in the home, but it's not her home. And so in her response to Simon wanting to get possession of the residence, she said the parties, both of them have occupied the marital residence since prior to getting married on or about November 25th, 2022. The party's prenuptial agreement dated November 11, 22, which was drafted by husband's counsel and this is a snippet of their prenuptial agreement. The entire prenuptial agreement is not uploaded to the court documents for Fulton County, but they did include a relevant part of it. And it says, upon an event of dissolution, Portia shall have the right to remain and occupy the marital residence, including up to the date the marital residence is sold, if the marital residence is sold. Upon the event of dissolution, Simon shall physically vacate i.e. cease living in the marital residence within 30 days. Provided, however, Simon, for a period of up to six months, he can leave his cars there. The event of dissolution has occurred upon either party commencing through the filing with any clerk of any court a proceeding for divorce. So it's not the actual divorce. It's when one party files for divorce, Simon has to move out within 30 days. And Portia is granted residence until the home is sold or they decide whatever they're going to do with it. So that is what Portia is fighting for. She's fighting for residence, but she's not an owner of the home. And in her response to Simon in section two of another response to Simon, she says, wife admits in part the allegations contained in paragraph two of husband's motion to the extent that the marital residence was purchased by husband. It doesn't say that Portia was also a purchaser of the home because she was not. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. So basically, Simon put in the prenup in the event of their divorce, Portia would be able to stay in the home until either the home is sold or they do whatever they're going to do with the home and he will vacate the home. So this is what he's promising her because he wants to marry her like he's trying to get her like he's using his assets to get Portia. He's using his money and his real estate to get Portia. And now that the time has come for him to pay up, he doesn't want to pay up and he's using all types of excuses to not leave the marital residence which technically is his residence now simon is saying because portia is bringing armed security with her he's saying that he feels in danger and that's also what his nanny is saying and portia points out that if he felt in danger he wouldn't have the address of the home listed in the court documents she points that out and i definitely agree with that you would not put the address in the court documents if you felt your safety was at risk and now simon has his nanny speaking out radar online is reporting portia williams x simon using nanny as witness an ugly divorce the employee slams rose star for bringing armed guard around children this is so unbelievable to me 
but they report Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams' ex-husband, Simon Gubadia, introduced a second witness to back up his claims against the reality star in divorce court. Now, these court documents, I don't see them uploaded to the court website yet, so I wasn't able to get these court documents. I don't know if they were leaked to Radar Online, if maybe Simon leaked them or someone in the courthouse leaked them to Radar Online, but I was not able to get the witness testimony, but Radar Online was. And they say she's worked for Simon since May of 2020 before he married Portia. And this person said they cared for Simon's kid before Portia into the picture and looked at Portia and her daughter Pilar after she wed Simon. This person said, quote, I was in charge of managing things around the home, taking care of the kids, overseeing the vendors and anything else that needed to be done. I work every day at the marital residence. Some days I work 10 to 11 hours in a day and some days I spend the night at the home. Depending on what needs to be done, I am always around. She says, Simon is such a good man. I have never seen him be violent or angry at all. He is very mild mannered and just a nice guy. So this is why I say I don't know if Simon paid her for this statement. That's my opinion. She went on to say that Portia reached out to her on February 22nd and asked if she could stay late the night. She agreed. The woman said Portia came to her that day and wished her her happy birthday and gave her flowers. The woman said Portia left the home that evening and never came back, which we already know that's a lie. Portia did come back. It was just roughly two weeks later. She went on to say she had to watch Simon's children the following night because Portia left the home when Simon was traveling. She said, quote, I could not go to my home from Thursday, February 22nd until Monday, February 26th because Portia left the marital residence without telling me and it was the week Simon's children were at the home. Simon returned to the house surprised of the divorce and without help from his wife. She was not doing her marital duties according to the nanny. But I did share with you guys in other court documents, Portia has said she is willing to watch his kids. Like if she's going to be a resident at the home, she is willing to watch his kids. The employee went on to detail the day Portia returned to the home two weeks later. She said Portia parked her car outside and she said, quote, I did not know she was coming with a guy that day. Simon asked me, can you go and open the door for Portia and ask her what she needs and whether she needs to come inside the home? She said, I went outside to meet Portia and I said, Simon is asking, do you need to come inside the house to get something? And Portia said that she does not need to answer anything. And then she went inside the house with a security guy with a pow pow. The man was a big guy who was walking like a bad guy. <laughs> I know Simon wrote this. She said, the man was a big guy who was walking like a bad guy. I did not know that Portia was coming with the guy. This came out of nowhere. I had never seen the guy before. The guy was inside the house sitting on the stairs with the with the pow pow showing. It was shocking to me. I was concerned. And then she just, then said that Simon called the police and the police officers came out and spoke to everyone. And Portia left with the security guard around midnight. Now, in another court document, Portia did say, yes, Simon did call the police. But she also said there was no like fuss, like Simon was having a casual conversation with a security guard. When the police came, they all had casual conversations like there was no big deal. So what you can see, in my opinion, is Simon like trumping it up like I had to call the police and he's trumping it up about this security guy who, of course, would be armed if he's doing security. But he's trumping things up and trying to make things seem like a big deal. The employee went on to say the last time that Portia came to the house, she did not leave. This was on Sunday, March 24th. She came with a guy to open the gate again. She came with her daughter, her mother and her mother's boyfriend. She was bringing her stuff back to the house. The same guy opened the gate. Then they started searching the house, went downstairs and disconnected the cameras around the house. The cameras are not working. This makes me uncomfortable because I am with the kids by myself as their nanny when their father is away at work. So y'all leave a comment and let me know what y'all think about Simon making such a big deal about Portia coming with security. For me, like I can't help but notice how many times they mention the gender of the security guard. Like they keep saying Portia brought another man to the house. She brought a man to the house. I didn't know it was going to be a guy. She brought a guy to the house as if his gender matters. And that's part of the reason I also feel like, you know, Simon might have written this statement. Because it keeps referring to the gender of the person as if they're offended by the gender. And Simon being a man, he might be offended by another man being in his home and being armed. 
But again, he made these promises in his prenuptial agreement that Portia could reside in the home. So I don't know what else he would expect in this situation. But y'all leave a comment and let me know your thoughts about it. As always, thanks for watching. Layla, 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 tell us it all.